everybody. Welcome to the special edition, the video version of the Dirty Lazy Girl podcast. I'm Stephanie Laska, and I'm here with my co-host. Hey, everyone. I'm Tamara Sneezik, professor of sociology and Stephanie's co-host. Welcome to the Dirty Lazy Girl podcast, everybody. If you're not listening here on YouTube, you can also listen just the audio version on Spotify, on Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, Google Podcasts, or on my website, DirtyLazyKeto.com. Thanks for joining us. Stephanie, I have tried a dozen different diets, oh, more than a dozen, probably like 40 diets, and I've made a lot of mistakes, and one of my big ones is I'm falling for the fad diets. I mean, I'm totally embarrassed to admit I've been on the cabbage soup diet twice <laughs> and then I was on one where for 30 days you had nothing but juice squeeze juice um, I, I mean if there's a fad diet I'm on it I've done it and it's easy for me for whatever reason to fall for these like quick fixes I think oh they lost 50 pounds you know and I'm like on that wagon and I've learned that this is just one of those mistakes I make and I think other people make so in this podcast Stephanie I'm hoping I can learn from these mistakes and share with our audience, you know, some of the mistakes I've made and the pitfalls to avoid and the lessons I've learned. Tamara, short-term gimmicks never worked for me either. Um, and then to take it a step further, I mean, I really needed to figure out a lifestyle that I could do on my own. Um, I hated going to those like weekly meetings or worse, stepping on a scale in front of other people. I hated feeling deprived. So. If we're gonna confess to our uh, dieting mistakes, I heard you say the cabbage diet, um, but I wanna tell you mine. So long before, long, long, long time ago, before I discovered Dirty Lazy Keto, I admit it, I would do a fad diet and I'd lose a bunch of weight. And then I'd be like, I'm all done, I can stop. I can just go back to my old ways. I really thought that, like I honestly believed there was no upkeep and that's just embarrassing. Yeah, I've done that too. <laughs> Um, so in this episode, we're going to discuss our top 10 dieting fails. And do any of these mistakes sound familiar so far? If not, there's more to come because we've made them all. <laughs> Today, we're going to share our personal stories of 10 dieting blunders. But first, Stephanie, let's take a quick break. Well, today's episode, friends, it is brought to you by... Dirty Lazy Keto, get started losing weight while breaking all the rules. It's the full support guide for anyone looking to start the keto diet or to boost their motivation to stay on track. It's available online or in stores. You can even go to my website, dirtylazyketo.com for more information. Awesome. Okay, I'll start because I've made a ton of mistakes. <laughs> so mistake number one, I over rely on diet food products um, because often they sound like, oh, I could eat, you know, that because it's diet food, um, whether it be like advertised as keto or low carb or high fat, whatever. I fall for that. And the problem is that they end up having a lot of hidden calories and sometimes they have more carbs than you think. Um, so I remember one time... Um, I had in weight loss, had a big stall, couldn't figure out why. And someone goes, are you, you know, what are you eating? And I was like, oh, I'm talking about my protein bars. And they're like, yeah, that's the problem. And I cut out these protein bars and sure enough, that, that ended the stall. It was, it was adding a ton of extra calories that I just didn't know about. So be careful when eating quote unquote diet products. That's reminding me of that movie, Mean Girls. Do you remember when the girls like told one of their friends that they were protein bars or diet bars and really they were like <laughs> high calorie bars and she was gaining weight? Anyway, I love that movie. So yeah. I think we've all done that. I mean, it's easy to get enticed, especially if it says like, you know, keto or low calorie or whatever it says on the cover of a package. It's really easy to think, well, that's hell of a lot faster than me cooking dinner, you know? Yeah. So I'm with you on that. Yeah. I, that's pretty and common. you got to read the labels like, don't listen to the low keto part or the low carb part. Just actually read the, read the labels. Yeah. It's no fun. <laughs> I know it's hard work. It's a quick kick. So I don't think you're alone in that one. I think yeah. every single person listening has yeah. totally done that. Me yeah. included. So yeah. I'm with you. One of my dieting fails or mistakes, Tamara, is um, trying to eat small portions. 
-hmm. I know I've shared about my very um, poor ladylike behavior. Whatever, like I'm a big old eater. I like a giant plate of food, like man size, extra large jumbo portions of food. And I've always tried to resist that. I was embarrassed by it. I thought I had to eat a little tiny bit of food and be starving all the time in order to lose weight. So for me, that's like a real dieting fail is trying to force myself to, you know, fit into someone's program, like one half cup brown rice. Like, no, thank you. I would much rather eat, you know, four cups of cabbage or whatever, something else that I want and not just this measly little diet portion. Yeah. No, thanks. Like they say eat four almonds. Who can eat four almonds? Who the hell's eating four <laughs> almonds? I'm not, or 10 or 12. Like, no, almonds are dangerous. So that's kind of a hard example. But yeah. in truth, like eating a small amount of food is hard for people like me that want to eat larger yeah. quantities. So yeah, and I'm the same way. So I totally hear you. And I have to find a diet plan that allows that. Otherwise, it's going to fail. It's going to fail. Yeah. And we don't want the top 10 dieting fails to include whatever. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Well, my second big mistake is um, overestimating the calories I burn during exercise. <laughs> you know, and I do some good hard workouts. Like I do a boot camp and I'll look at my watch and it'll say, oh, you burned 600 calories. Well, then I'll go home and have like, you know, a giant dinner and my keto dessert and all this other stuff. And it, it, it adds up to way more than 600 calories. So, you know, you gotta, um, you know, exercise for sure and that will help, but you, we have this tendency and I have this tendency to overestimate how many calories I burn. So keep track, but then look at your food and say, oh, wait a minute, you know, don't give yourself this huge, you know, amount of calories when you've only burned a short amount. You're, you're on to something with that. I think you've seen me with all my marathon trainings over the year, Tamara. I would like plan for this giant food binge that I would go on and Tamara would see it every time and we'd be walking the dogs and she'd be like, mm -hmm, sure, Stephanie, you sure you want to eat all that? And I'm like, oh, I bought all these snacks because I'm going to run a 5k tomorrow or, you know, a 10k. And you're like, uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> so it's very easy to want to, you know, use food as a way to get to eat more. So I've, yeah. I've definitely fallen down that rabbit hole and it's been a struggle. Um, and I think my dieting fail, I mean, it's kind of an offshoot of that and relates as it relates to exercise. But when I was coming up, I've always thought of exercise as a punishment. I thought it was something mean, you know, that I had to do to my body. Like, um, like I ate too much or I've gained too much weight. Therefore I have to go do jumping jacks or go for a run. And that was something I really had to work on. You know, that's, I think that's pretty common. A lot of people think, oh, you know, I, I had that big dinner, so I'll go to the gym. Um, so I had to change that whole mindset for me, that whole dieting fail of exercise as punishment, and think about it more of a privilege. And yeah. that's not an easy thing to do. That's like psycho behavior, <laughs> right? <laughs> like who, who thinks that? But I have, to, I have to think about it like a lot. Like, okay, you know, this is a privilege that I get to go for a run or a swim. Like my body is healthy. I'm strong. I'm young. I can do this. And I, when I try to reframe it that way, it's helped me. Yeah. I think a lot of people are in your same boat. Like we're taught that it's punishment because that's, they make us run as punishment in school, like run laps as punishment. So of course we think it's horrible. So yeah, you have to reframe it. I would also add just, or find some exercise that makes you feel that's fun and that you love like if you hate running don't run you know what I mean? right yeah so or then, yeah yeah you gotta rethink it like mm -hmm. it's not punishment because i think a lot of us had that in pe right when we were yes. younger yes and especially if you're a bigger person you you got made fun of in pe or you were picked last in pe so you associate exercise with not only punishment but shame that's so true. there's a yeah, so there's a lot to overcome with exercise, but you can discover the joy in it. I, I think I have as I've gotten older, haven't you? Like really found some of it really enjoyable and found ways to make it enjoyable. Sometimes it's it's the learning for me happened when it got taken away. Like I share in my book, so I'm being open about this about in dirty lazy keto. I share about after I had a major abdominal surgery, I was told I couldn't run, I couldn't do yoga, I couldn't lift weights, I couldn't exercise. And I hate being told what I can't do, right? <laughs> we all know that. But when so when the doctor told me I couldn't do anything, then it made it more desirable for me and it made me think 
how much I missed it. Like the value that it brought to my life. Yeah. I don't know if that, that's kind of deep, but no, that's it's great. Cool. No. And I need that, <laughs> you know, cause we you do not want abdominal no, surgery to no. discover your love affair no. with, the, with the exercise, but just remember, you know, I'm healthy and I, you know, I can do these things and not everyone can. So you do, yeah. you forget to appreciate it. Well, my next fail is not paying attention to important, to important food groups. Like for me, I can't just completely eliminate an entire food group or and not pay, I just need to pay attention that I'm getting what my body needs. So like when I've done dirty lazy keto, one of the things is I people make one of two mistakes. They either way go overboard with the fats or don't eat enough. And I found that I wasn't eating enough because I think I didn't get past that thinking because I was in the low fat diet era, you know, in the 80s. So I wasn't eating enough, but you feel bad, Stephanie, when you're not eating enough fat. Um, and another mistake too is either too much or too little protein. So I, I would make that mistake and I'd be like, why am I feeling bad? And I had to really look and say, okay, let's not, you know, just because I can eat a lot more protein and I can up my fat, I just need to watch, am I doing that? Am I eating enough? Am I eating too much? Or am I eating fat and protein that are the right kinds? That was another mistake I made in terms of, you know, a singling out a food group was I tended to eat like the really greasy salami and pepperoni <laughs> type, you know, meats. And I would feel just awful. And so I, I had to say, okay, you know, let's pay attention to these. Nothing is unlimited and I need to, you know, not just anything goes, just be careful and thoughtful about these things. Well, you are the most mindful eater that I've ever met, Tamara. You've always encouraged me to be more mindful about my yeah. food. So I think that's really honest. And I, I, I think it's normal for everyone to want to push the limits within any, you know, new way of eating where you're trying, you know, we're like little kids. We want to see what we can get away with, you mm -hmm. know? I think it's very normal to say, oh, well, I can have this. Well, how much can I have of it? And what will happen if I, you know, only have this or have too much of that? It's normal. And I think that's okay. That's part of dieting fails, right? Is to, to try something, you know, maybe push the limits a little bit and then say, oh, okay, you know, maybe that didn't work for me. I might need to change it. So it sounds like, you know, the best thing about our fails is I think we're learning from them. That's the yeah. hope anyway. That's what, you know, in a way you're saying you kind of need to fail because <laughs> you, right? yeah, you have to figure out what's right for you and when is, too, is it too much and when is it not enough? And you can't do that without making a few mistakes. So, you know, don't beat yourself up if you're making mistakes. Okay. If we did that, we would be, <laughs> I've made so many, like I can't count. So I just, <laughs> yeah, you just have to say, I'll learn from it next time. Like, you know, put down the pepperoni, Tamara, <laughs> and eat a piece of chicken. <laughs> well, on that same kind of length or wavelength, mm -hmm. another one of my dieting fails, Tamara, is it's kind of it reminds me of the movie from Austin Powers. Um, do you remember when he saw the mole and he was like, mole. <laughs> I love that scene. Mole. So what I do is I, I tend to focus on what I can't have. Well, I've done that in the past and I've tried to work on it. Is someone will say, oh, you know, you can't have this. You can't have the ice cream. You can't have the sweets. You can't have whatever. And so that's all I'll think about. It's like, mo, <laughs> mo, 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 mo. mo. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it's important for me to learn from that because I have a tendency to fixate on what I can't have, quote unquote. So I have to really be careful of that and think to myself, no, I can have great things. Let me, instead of thinking about the mole or thinking about this stuff I'm not supposed to eat, let me focus on the things I can eat. So, you know, for example, we're talking about dirty, lazy keto. You know, a lot of people will say, oh, I can't eat tortillas. I can't eat beans. I can't eat, you know, cereal for breakfast. So when I hear that, and I've heard those voices in my head too, I try to think about, I can have fettuccine Alfredo made with zoodles. I can have Alfredo sauce and other people can't. Like I can have sugar-free jello pudding, you know, an entire bowl full for dessert if I want. I can have, you know, low-carb beer or a shot of tequila if I want. Like I try to focus on the things I can have and not the, the things that are like quote unquote off limits. And that's helped me as a dieting fail. Yeah, that's great advice. Cause I find myself doing that like getting all feeling deprived rather than saying, wait a minute, I've got some great things. In fact, you know what I'm craving right now? What are you craving right now? 
guacamole guacamole (laughs) (laughs) okay (laughs) well my my next mistake and we and you know it's a big fail for me because we did a whole episode on it which was not tracking what i eat but also maybe throw in there tracking exercise because i tend to overestimate the calories i burn with exercise and sometimes i overestimate the calories you know that i'm taking in or underestimate the calories i'm taking in so for all the reasons we mentioned that episode and for you know lots of great tips on how to track go back to that episode i forget the episode number stephanie but anyway Um, that's a great big mistake. And I think a lot of people do that. So find some way, even if it's not writing it down, but you know, some other way of tracking so that you don't get off course and get discouraged. I I hear what you're saying. I mean, it's, it's, it's hard to admit like when something's not working and then to get course correction. I know for me in the past, I've been wanting to just give up sometimes. Like if I make a big mistake or I'm not tracking or I'm not, I don't know, keeping honest maybe with the with some of the things I do and then I'm like you know crap it's not working you know I just quit like throw throw in the baby with the bathwater or whatever the expression is um it goes back for me is like I have to stop trying to be perfect that's an issue for me that I struggle with in every area of my life not just eating like I'm a little bit of an overachiever and I try to do everything right and not screw up but Tamara when I do that I'm I'm missing out on the opportunity to learn from the mistakes because I feel like that's when the magic happens. Um, I'm thinking about in particular, this happens to me every time I'm turning in a cookbook. I know on the show I talked about this in the past. Right when one of my cookbooks are due, I go through this crazy thing where I remake like literally dozens of recipes all at once, like boom, boom, boom. And I'm in that spot right now because I have a book due on Monday. So I've literally made like 40 recipes in the last three days, and then I start eating them all because they're really good. <laughs> so I'm eating like all day, really good. I mean, cornbread, I'm having pancakes, I'm having loaves of bread, cinnamon rolls, chocolate pudding. I mean, it's my fridge won't even hold all the food. So my point is I'm eating all the food. I know this happens. Guess what's, you know, the scale is going up, right? because I'm eating way too much all day long, even though it's good food. So I need to learn from my mistakes, not complain, not, you know, throw in the towel. I need to go, okay, fine. Either I need to not eat as much or maybe not eat as much. (laughs) I think that's about it, right? There's no other learning. I need to say, Stephanie, stop. I don't eat cornbread like seven servings. Or last night I made chili rellenos for dinner, plus uh, Chinese chicken tacos, plus I made like 10 other things. Like, I can't do that. No. Although no. those Chinese chicken tacos. Girl, I don't delicious. want to give away all my secrets, but I got I mad cooking going on. You need to come over here. I have I so know. much food, I can't even fit it in the fridge. Yeah. I'll just swing by. I'll bring it out to your car. Yeah. And maybe that's something where more better tracking could help. Or like you say, too, just forgiving yourself and not expecting perfection. Like, when you're doing these recipes, maybe you just you have to say, okay, this is a tough time for me. And I might go off course more. I'm just going to have to stay on top of it or just forgive yourself if you, if you mess yeah, up. Yeah, because I've complained about this before and we're all yeah. acting like I'm not going to do it any differently. <laughs> but the truth is I'm going to screw up. I'm going to eat way too much because I love the food that I'm making and I want to eat it and make sure it tastes right. Yeah. So I am going to gain a few pounds and that's okay. And then next week I'll get back on track. Exactly. Well, my last fail, and this one's, I make this mistake every time, which is not drinking enough water. <laughs> and, you know, especially if you're on keto, you, it's super important just, you know, health-wise. Um, but also, I often mistake thirst for hunger. And also, in your, if you're dealing with keto flu, it will make you feel much, much better. A lot of that is made worse by not being hydrated enough. Um, and yet I struggle with that. I mean, I've tried different things. You know, I've got my little, I've tried like 15 different water bottles <laughs> and I'm finding one I like. Um, but you know, it's, that's always an ongoing thing. And I think that's no matter what diet you're on, you really need to just drink, drink, drink. I even heard by the way, and I forget where I was in, on another podcast where they're saying it's even linked to aggravating your anxiety and depression by being dehydrated. Who knew? You got to tell yourself whatever you got to do to get those drinks in. 
<laughs> no, seriously, it'll make me look 18 years younger. You're right? Like, I won't be sad. I won't be depressed. I'll be able to poop. <laughs> I'll be full. Exactly. Just go down the list, Tamara. There's a lot of lot of good tips. Keto, flu, you name it. Just yeah. You know, and part of myself, I'll have a drink in, in spirit of that. Thank you. In my honor. And I, part of it too is my obsession with coffee because I'm drinking coffee when I really should be drinking water. I was thinking of you when I was doing my cookbook. I have a couple of recipes where I talk about you in the coffee. Oh, I'm so saying. excited. You're famous. Oh. oh, you're cookbook famous, Tamara. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Well, my number five, I don't really have anything related to the water because I'm, I feel like a camel drinking all the <laughs> yeah, time. You're really, you're my role model for that. Talking one. about my shots of tequila over here. I'm giving away all my secrets. Uh-oh. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Just kidding, people. Keep it serious. Uh, but my number five, so this brings us to tip number 10, right? Yeah. So, yeah. So my tip number 10, folks, for me is one of my biggest dieting fails, and this is a whopper for me, is that over the years, I've always focused on the inside and not the outside. I kept trying to fix like the food part, like, oh, you know, you know, eat this, not this, and cook with this oil and not that oil and, you know, less of this food and more of that food. But really, Tamara, for me, that wasn't the issue. The whole thing was how I thought about myself. I needed to really think about that I was worth it. Um, I wanted self-confidence. I wanted to feel better about myself. I wanted to feel healthier. I wanted to, you know, move better in my body. I wanted to feel stronger. So for me, I had to get my head around that part. Like I had to really focus on the emotional part of all this and less about the food. And I think once I spent more time on building my self-esteem and my confidence, it helps me to make better choices about food. And for me, that was the biggest problem that I had to overcome. I agree. And unfortunately, you don't learn that. I think a lot of people only learn that after they've lost a bunch of weight because they realize, hey, wait, I'm not happy. <laughs> what happened? And then you realize it's, there's more to it than just the food. It's like you said, the confidence, the, you know, learning to take care of yourself and building your esteem that doesn't come by just getting skinny. It really doesn't. So yeah, I think that's a good one to end on. <laughs> Well, so, that's the reason why, you know, you and I started the podcast is because yeah. too often people think, oh, you know, I just want to lose weight. I'm like, no, no, that's not it at all. Like yeah. it's a whole body process. It's a mentality shift. Yeah. And I think that the issues that we talk about here at Dirty Lazy Girl, that's our goal anyway, is to try to address all of those things like self-care, addiction, you know, yeah. getting along with family members, speaking up for yourself, going after goals, creating a space in your home just for you. Those are the types of things that need to happen to help support a new lifestyle where you feel better about yourself and you have better self-esteem. It's not about the food. It's not about the eating. No, I totally agree. And I'm so glad. I like talking about those issues because diets come and go and, and dieting isn't really the main issue. It, it's all these other things. <laughs> so, yeah. It's not as easy as we thought, is it? It's not no. just cutting sugar or cutting junk food. It's a whole lot more. It is a whole lot more. And hopefully we've touched on a few things people can actually use besides just dieting tips. And I think even talking about the failures really isn't actually about dieting either. It's about knowing yourself. It's about being kind to yourself. It's about forgiving yourself. It's all those things that make you, you know, feel good as a person and still be successful. hoo <laughs> hoo -ah! Preach, Yay. girl. Yay. So listeners... What are your dieting mistakes that you've made? Or, and do you have any solutions? Tell us all the things by emailing stephanie at dirtylazyketo.com or via Facebook or Instagram at dirtylazyketo. But before we get to our personal favorite hack, Stephanie, let's take one last break. Well, today's episode, listeners, is brought to you by Dirty Lazy Keto. Get started losing weight while breaking all the rules which is available at Walmart and soon to be Target. Thank you very much, little surprise. It's gonna be stocked at uh, Target very soon. Of course, you can buy this online um, at Amazon or Barnes & Noble. You can always shop for it wherever you shop for books. And listeners who like listening to my crazy voice here on the podcast, uh, you might be pleased to know that you can listen to me reading the book as an audio book. And the audio book is available on Audible, Libra, uh, Google Play, iBooks, wherever you like to listen to your audiobooks. 
Excellent. Okay, Stephanie, do you want to do your hack first? Well, I love sharing the final hack. This is like the fun part, isn't it? It's like the big yeah. hoo <laughs> That's the word for today. hoo <laughs> Do you remember what movie that's from? It's, it's a military thing, right? I was thinking about Scent of a Woman with Al Pacino. Oh, remember he yes. goes, hoo Yes, I remember that. But I thought, I thought that was because he was in the military. I don't know. I don't know. I, just like, tell. I like I'm... noises. I'm a big fan of funny noises. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm a strange person, people. Okay. Well, my final hack, um, and this may come as a surprise to some of our listeners, because I know a lot of you maybe see me as an open book when it comes to weight loss. I've told you every private experience in my life. <laughs> Those who have read my books know all my hidden secrets. Um, but I, my hack for all of you is that when I first started, I didn't tell anyone. I kept this quite a big secret from Tamara, from my husband, from my kids, from everybody. And I didn't want any input. I didn't want their criticism. I didn't want their advice. And truth be told, I was just afraid. And I think that was okay. It worked in my favor. So my hack to all of you who are thinking about starting a Dirty Lazy Keto or any big life change I think it's okay to keep it to yourself for a while until you get your, you know, your footing and your confidence. And um, that's just fine. You don't have to tell people your business. Keep it secret. That's right. And then they won't be up in your business. You don't need people <laughs> up in your business. So no. just don't tell anyone. Keep it a secret. Why I love that. Nobody gives that advice. And I think it's awesome advice. That's secret. Yeah. You don't have to go blabbing. Nope. Don't be dipping and dapping when you don't know what's happening. <laughs> Oh my God. <laughs> Somebody stop me now. <laughs> hoo <-wah. laughs> hoo <-wah. laughs> So my final hack is to avoid deprivation. Uh, for me, this may not be for everyone, but for me, my biggest failure on diets is I go on it and then I'm unhappy and I'm not eating what I like. I'm not getting any pleasure from eating. I'm not enjoying the food. And so I cheat. It just sets myself up for cheating or I'll sacrifice, sacrifice, feel deprived. And then once I lose the weight, I just go right back to like, oh, now I can eat. Now I can be happy. And I'm like, you know, gaining it all back in like two weeks. Um, so for people like me, I recommend that you Find a diet that doesn't make you feel deprived. Like there, and there. That's what I love about Dirty Lazy Keto. But if Dirty Lazy Keto doesn't work for you, like find something where it can give you the foods that make you feel good and that you know. And it doesn't mean like I know I love potato chips, but it doesn't mean find a diet where I can eat you know a giant bag of potato chips because nobody's gonna lose weight on that. But maybe that will allow a potato chip substitution or some of the other of my favorite foods so that I can, you know, that I can go to like, one of the things that I love is watermelon. Like I love watermelon. <laughs> and so, you know, I can find a diet that allows me to have that, like, you know, maybe not huge quantities of it, but I don't, so that way I don't feel deprived. I'm having some of my, my favorite foods and working it in, you know, while I'm doing it. So I really recommend if you're on a diet and you're just feeling unhappy and hangry all the time, modify it or find another diet well we all know that mistakes can be our biggest teachers so it can mean that you're trying you know sometimes we have to reframe what mistakes mean and we hope that by sharing our top 10 dieting fails today that might remind you of the fact that it's okay to fail it's okay to make mistakes um, it's an opportunity for you to learn as cheesy as that sounds um, but most importantly friends whatever mistakes you make just don't give up on yourself. That's our big takeaway for today. Exactly. Hey, and Stephanie, we have another listener review. Oh, I love hearing the listener reviews. <laughs> We've been getting more lately and it's, um, it's so fun. I love reading them. Don't you? I do. Do you and want today's, to? Yes. Today's okay. listener email. It looks like it's from Anne Marie. So Anne Marie is driving right now and she's like, oh, like what? They're reading my email. It's true, Anne Marie. We were so excited about your email or your, I'm sorry, your review that we wanted to read it on the air. And she said, I've started reading Stephanie's book and listened to all of Stephanie and Tamara's past podcasts. If you haven't listened to any, you should. They are so, quote, really? Other people think that like that too? I'm not the only one? <laughs> it made me laugh. The podcasts are truly inspiring. So thank you, Anne-Marie, for saying such kind words. Yeah, and I am glad that we're not the only one. You hope. Sometimes we say, you know, stuff on here and I'm like, 
I hope they don't think I'm a total weirdo. <laughs> Mo <laughs> guacamole. <laughs> Hey, if you're enjoying listening to our free podcast, would you do us the honor of leaving a review on Apple Podcasts? It makes a world of difference. I'm gonna give you instructions how, okay? This is how it works. First of all, I'll say it really loudly into the microphone. <laughs> on your iPhone, select the purple icon. Using the search tool, type in Dirty Lazy Girl. Click on the thumbnail to open it up. Scroll down until you see rating and reviews. Click on the number of stars you'd like to leave, hopefully five. Scroll down and click leave a review. Type in your review and then hit OK. That's it. You're done. We really appreciate your support. Again, leave us a review, Dirty Lazy Girl on Apple Podcasts. Thanks.